Hello, and welcome to our next math lesson. Like all good muscles, your brain needs warm-up for you to get going, so I'll give you your warm-up problems here. <clears throat> Pause your <clears throat> computer a little bit and work on the problems, and we'll go over the answers at the end. To quickly review what we did last week, we talked a little bit about perimeter, and perimeter being the distance around the outside of a polygon. And today, our lesson is going to be on area. An area is the number of square units it takes to cover a two-dimensional surface. So I want to know the inside this time. That's going to be our area. I put a little word problem for you. Miley will like this one. Miley made this pan of brownies. If each brownie is one square inch, how many square inches is her pan? So what I took a look at, and I said, it looks like she has two rows of brownies going this way, and four going this way. So to find the area of this, I would have to do two times four, and two times four is eight. And my units for area are always gonna be squares. So in this case, I have eight square inches. Now on this, we're going to combine a couple, or both of our last two lessons. I gave you a shape here, and it's cut up into squares for you. And what I'd like you to do is figure out both the perimeter, which is side plus side plus side plus side, and the area, which is side times side, or length times width is the way we usually teach it. That doesn't look good. So in my class, the way that I always ask my students to do this is to label their sides. So I know this side, my shorter side, is three units. My longer side is one, two, three, four, five, six units. So if I want to find my perimeter, I have to add side plus side plus side plus side. I also like to label those ones. Three and six. So six plus three plus six plus three, nine plus nine is 18. So my perimeter is 18. I'm gonna say inches on this one. My smart board is not cooperating with me again today. Okay. Now I wanna know the area. So I have to do three times six for the area. And three times six is 18. And my inches are squared on this, so 18 inches squared. It just so happened on this problem, our area and our perimeter ended up being the exact same answer. It doesn't happen very often, okay? Now I have another one in the corner here for you to figure out. So go ahead and try to figure out the perimeter and the area of that square for me. Now, if you're doing it the way I would like it, I would have labeled the sides. And I know my perimeter is three plus three plus three plus three. So three plus three is six, plus three is nine, plus three is 12. So I have 12 inches for perimeter. And my area is gonna be my length times my width. My length times the width is three times three is nine, and that is nine inches squared, or I could write it square inches. Okay. I'm gonna throw you another problem, see how you do in this one. Okay, I threw another rectangle up here for you, and one of my sides is nine, and the other side is five. See if you can find my area and perimeter both for me for this rectangle. To 
find my perimeter, I like to go and fill in the rest of my sides. So this side is nine, this side is five. Boy, is my board off. We'll try one more time. I'll put it on the inside and see if it looks. Oops. Okay. Nine plus five is 14, plus nine is 23, plus five is 28, and I'll say inches again. My board is way goofy. And this time, I have to do my length times my width. So my length is gonna be nine, my width is gonna be five, and nine times five is 45. So I have 45 square inches. And I'll throw one more easy one for you, then I'm going to throw one hard one at you. So here's your next rectangle, and I even typed in these numbers so you can read them a little bit better since my board's not working very well. Go ahead and find out the perimeter for me and the area of this rectangle. Okay. I went back in and filled in the rest of my sides so I can do this easily. So my perimeter is going to be 12 plus 4 plus 12 plus 4. And I decided to do it this way. Two 12s are 24. That didn't work well. I should have known better. So 12 plus 12 are 24. And 4 plus 4 are 8. And 24 and 8 are 32. So my perimeter would be 32 inches. Now my area. I have to do 4 times 12. I'm going to break that 12 into a 10 and a 2. 4 times 10 is 40, and 4 times 2 is 8. So my area would be 48 square inches. I promised you one hard problem, so um, hold on a second. I'll write it down, and I'll draw it up, and then you can try to solve it for me. Here you go. Now we're going to have to work a little bit harder. I would still like you to find the perimeter of this object, which shouldn't be very hard, and area, which is a little bit more difficult because you have to do a little bit of extra thinking on here. Why don't you pause your computer, try to figure out your answers, and then we'll work on it together and see how we see if we can uh, agree with each other. Okay, so for perimeter, Again, not very hard, I just have to add my numbers together. So six plus five is 11. Oh, seven and three are 10. So this is gonna give me 21 together. And 21 plus 13 is 34, plus eight is 42. So my perimeter on this would be 42, and I'm gonna use inches as my units again. So I have 42 inches. Now, area, a little bit more difficult. But I always try to like to make problems look easy. So I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to cut it into two rectangles. So I know I can find the area of a rectangle real easily. I'm going to cut it right here. Now what I need to do is find the area of this rectangle. I'm going to make this one have some red slash lines on it so I can find it easily. And then I'm going to have to find the area of this other rectangle. So, I have to find the area of this one. I want to find the length of this side, which is six, and the length of this side, which is eight. So this problem is, this part is gonna be six times eight. And six times eight, if I can't remember six times eight, I'd like to do five times eight, which is 40, and eight more are 48. So the area of this red rectangle, I'll even make this red so it matches, is 
48 square inches. Now I have to find this green rectangle. And I notice this side is seven inches long, and this side is three inches long. So I'm gonna do seven times three equals seven times three. I can double seven to get 14. One more seven is gonna give me 21. So my green rectangle is 21 square centimeter, or square inches. So I have to add those two numbers together. So 48 plus 21 equals, looks like it's 69 to me. And my answer would be square inches. So 69 square inches would be the area of that shape. Since some of my students have been complaining about our videos being too long, I'm going to cut the video off here. Your workbook page today is going to be page 207. You're going to notice that we didn't do anything on page 206. You can just go ahead and skip that page. And your, pink, your home connection book is going to be page 113 and 114. If you want to leave me right now, you can go and leave me and do those, those pages. I'm going to try to do a couple extra problems for anybody who wants to stay with me um, to do a couple of enrichment problems. So go ahead and do those pages, pages 113 and 114 in your home connection and page 207 in your workbook. And anyone who wants to stay with me, I'll put a couple problems up for you today. Okay, here's your first extra problem. See how quickly you can do 236,427. Now, don't be afraid of this. It's really not very hard. Pause it for a couple seconds, see how long, and see if you can do it, and then come back and watch me do it. In doing this problem, all you really have to know how to do is multiply by six. So six times seven is 42. I'm gonna put down my two, carry my four, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16, so I'll put down my 6, carry 1. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 is 25, put down my 5, carry my 2. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 2 is 38, put down my 8, carry my 3. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 is 21, put down a 1, carry a 2. 6 times 2 is 12 plus two more is 14. Now, I need three numbers in my house, so I'm gonna, after three, I'm gonna put a, or a comma, and three more in a comma. And if you got the answer 1,418,562, you have the answer that I have. I hope we're both right. I'll throw another problem up for you. Here's your next problem. Take a minute or two, see how you do. And I'll do it with you. Okay. I'm going to do this problem for you a couple different ways. One way I like to do problems is on ratio table. And another way is to do a standard algorithm. My kids tend to like to do a standard algorithm. I always like to do as many different ways as I can. Okay. First problem. Stand, or doing a ratio table. I'm going to do 42 times 1. 42. 42 times 2, I'm going to just double this and get 84. I want to go 42 times 4, I want to go times 4 now. I can just double this again, and if I double that, I get 168. So I've taken care of the 4. Now, I have to do, I'm going to do 42 times 10. And I get 420. And I'm going to double that, do 20. Double this, I get 840. So this will give me 24. So now I have to add these two together. I add those two together. 840 plus 168. 
Okay, eight, zero. I should get 1,008. Now I'll come over and see if I get the same answer when I do standard algorithm. I'm going to do four times two is eight. Four times four is 16. Now I'm multiplying by a 10, so I have to put a space holder down here. In my class, I always call him Waldo. Two times two is four. Two times four is eight. If I add those numbers together, I get 1,008 again. Okay, let's do one more together. Here we go, next problem. Write it down. And then come back and check your answer with me. Here we go. I'm going to do this problem two different ways again. I can do one is area model, and of course, back to standard algorithm. So there's first box. In this box, I'm going to do nine times three is 27. Then I have two zeros, so I have to tack on those two zeros. This box, I have seven times three is 21, and I have one zero. Here I have nine times four is 36, and one zero, and four times seven is 28. Now I have to add all these numbers together, and I'm gonna add these two together in my head real quickly. So 360 and 210 are 570, and 28 more is 598. I have to add that to 2700, and I get 3,298. Let's see if I get the same thing standard algorithm. 4 times 7 is 28, carry my 2. 4 times 9 is 36, plus 2 is 38. I'm going to put down my wall dose, so because I, I know I'm multiplying by a 10, not a 1. 3 times 7 is 21. Put down my 1s, carry my 10s. You notice I crossed this one off because that was from multiplying by 4, and I had to carry my new one. 3 times 9 is 27, plus 2 is 29. So if I add these, I get 32.98. Same answer. Not so hard. If you guys want one more, I'm going to try to trick you. We'll try one last one. Just another multiplication problem, but at this time I threw a decimal in there for you. See if you can figure out how to handle that. Go ahead and try to do it, and I'll come back and help you with it. Okay, this problem I'm just going to work out standard algorithm with you. 2 times 5 is 10. Put down my 1s, carry my 10s. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 1 is 19. I'm going to just not worry about the decimal point. I'm going to carry my 1. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 1 is 19. Now I have to multiply by my 1. I have to keep that placeholder, my friend Waldo. 1 times 5 is 5. I already used that. 1 times 9 is 9. I already used that. 1 times 9 is 9. Now I just have to add, I get zero, four, carry a one, 19, carry a one, 11. And I have to, hold on, I have a mistake somewhere. <laughs> Okay, my one problem I have left is there's a decimal point in here. And actually there are two spots past the decimal point. So the way that I get that in my answer is I'm gonna come down here and move my decimal point over two spots. One, two. So if I did this problem, my answer would be $119.40 if this was money. Okay. Hopefully you enjoyed having a little bit of extra math today, and have a great day.